Hey YouTube, welcome back. It has been one week since the launch of the 0.9 multiplayer patch for Last Epoch, and what a week it's been. There have been a couple standout builds, lots of new builds, which I love to see. A couple standout builds. We had some Glacier builds with 10,000 wards just by clicking on some new nodes on their skill tree. We've had builds that are pre-nerfed by 63% that are still insanely strong, and somehow more minion builds than I care to admit. And this one, the Lightning Bug. Now, if you already follow me here on YouTube, you know that I've been posting videos about this build already. There's a early access 0.9 event that happened in the past, but now that we've been able to work on this character longer, play it for longer, play with the new gear affixes, the new item bases, we know that we can make improvements. And <laughs> I think it's really good. So I'm going to share this with you here today. I'll give an important video shout out at the end of this video to someone else who's also been working on this build, making their own versions of it. So stay tuned until then, or you can just skip forward and see who I'm recommending. But this build's great. It has lots of good defense. It really stands out to me how easy this character is to level and gear. The quality of life is insane. I really, really enjoy playing this character. I call it a good streamer build. If you have arthritis, it's a good arthritis build as well. You can watch Twitch chat because you have 16 layers of defense. Okay, well, hold on. You have armor. Uh, you have about 50% armor. You can cap your armor if you want to. You have about 82% dodge without really working too hard, which is at the point of diminishing returns. So you have insane dodge. You have one, two, three different forms of damage reduction coming in from the Beastmaster skill tree. And then four, five, another two more coming in from the Druid skill tree, along with tons of leech, easy gameplay, good AoE damage, good damage to stun bosses with as well. It is so, so easy to play. It is not surprising to me that this build has been so popular. A lot of people have been enjoying playing this character as their starter build on the 0.9 patch. So this video is going to have two parts to it. The first part, right after we're finished talking here, is going to talk about the major changes between this build and the video that I posted previously. After that, the second part of the video will be an overview of the character going over the mastery and the skill tree and the gear, the stuff that you might already know about if you watched that previous video. So before we get started, I just want to mention this video is hashtag sponsored by EHG. Special thanks to 11th Hour Games, the developers of Last Epoch, for helping me do what I do here on YouTube and on Twitch as well. Remember, if you like what you see here, just leave a comment, leave a like. If you're playing this build, let me know how you're playing it, how you're gearing it differently than I am, or maybe even the same. If you're playing a different build, let me know what you're playing. I love to hear what people are doing in Last Epoch. Love to see what those different builds end up being. Here we are in game looking at our level 100 Swarm Blade Lightning Tornado proc character. This is the second time that we played this character. The first time we played it was during early access. You can watch that video as a link in the description of this video. But for this, let's talk about the updates of this character, how it differs from the first one, some of the itemization and gearing, the affixes are different. We're going to talk about the um, reliability of having the Spriggan Companion. It's a question that's come up very often. We'll talk about some of the com the some of the mechanics to this build that are like very uh, very often asked on stream at twitch.tv slash pair the pig when people are like, trying to replicate this build on their own. And then we'll talk about some other versions and shout out to other content creators who are helping to popularize this awesome new build. So before we get into that, I want to say we did play this build as our first slash second character. We re-rolled after uh, we re-rolled off our first character 24 hours into 0 0.9 because we were trying to kill the tier four bosses as soon as uh, as soon as possible in softcore as part of like a community race that was going on at the time. We, uh, I'm I'm certain that I could have gotten like second or third place uh, killing the bosses as fast as possible if I hadn't wasted 24 hours playing a different build instead. So I have a very high opinion of this build. Hardcore, softcore, speed farming. There's a couple of variations in this build if you want to put your own spin on it. But it's uh, totally overperformed in offenses, defenses, quality of life, simplicity of gearing, all those sorts of things. So if you haven't watched the first video, you can go watch that. Let's talk about differences between the old uh, bug build and this bug build here. The primary difference that you'll see is that we have Fragment of the Enigma. This thing is weird, spicy, and I think very, very good for clear speed. It is not good for a single target. For a single target, I highly recommend that you swap over to some kind of katana. Katanas have that crit multi. They can have that flat spell damage on them. And then they can have percent dodge rating as a suffix, which is an excellent suffix to have even for bosses. So for bosses, tier four, hardest content of the game. Yes, we're going to dual wield. Yes, you can still face tank. Yes, this build is incredibly tanky. So, but for clear speed, we have this. This is kind of like putting on a shield for, uh, for monolith farming. So on like a normal build, you might consider using a shield for monoliths and then like putting on as much damage as possible single target because single target is more about de like uh, dealing with mechanics and whatnot or just dealing as much damage as you can in a small period of time. 
When I say this is kind of like a shield, it's because we're not dual wielding. And dual wielding says 9% increased damage taken. It used to be 15, it's currently 9. Got buffed for us in this patch, 0 0.9. Uh, but we are taking 9% less damage because we're not dual wielding, which is neat. It has only an 11% chance to apply spark charge on hit, but we hit many, many times. We have our Swarm Blade Strike, which we're going to be attacking with all the time. It's our actually, actually Serpent Strike. And then we have some attack speed to go along with that. We have our Dive, which is a, another melee attack. And remember, both the Serpent Strike and the Dive are melee attacks for the purpose of the more damage for Spark Charge applied by melee, by melee attacks. It's not when you use a melee attack and hit, it's on hit. So if you hit multiple enemies, all of those are going to roll separately. We also have the Lightning Proc, which we're scaling as our primary source of damage from Tornado. We also have the Storm Orbs from Tornado. And we also have uh, Maelstrom, which can have those little lightning ticks that we're specking into. And Spark Charges hit, they can apply Spark Charges on hit. I think that last one's a bug, but it does work. So we have lots of little components of the build that help us get our Spark Charges. And when you're clearing Echoes, you're going to see that this gives you a nice boost of clear speed. The lack of clear speed and lack of AoE damage was the only thing about the first version of the build that I didn't like, and this solves it in a really cool way. It also has plus one lightning skills. It's also a relatively low level item with very low LP, which means that you can get this with one LP, two LP, put some crit multi on it, put some spell crit multi on it, or sorry, spell critical strike chance on it, and it'll be an excellent addition for your clear speed. So that's the big thing here. The second thing you'll notice about the differences from our first build is our main hand. We are not using a Rune Dagger, we're using Obsidian Scepter instead. The difference is, Rune Dagger has attack speed and crit. The attack speed is nice, I kind of miss that. I'd like to have as much attack speed on a Scepter as possible. I wish that I had exalted melee attack speed, that'd be great. The other difference here is we have so much more flat damage. So we don't need the crit. Currently I'm sitting at 23, 23 base critical strike chance because we have five plus eight from our summon Spriggan, plus 10 from Stormblade form. So going from 23 to 27 base critical strike chance doesn't really move the needle much in terms of how much gear you need in order to cap your critical strike chance. However, the uh, the flat damage that you get from this thing, just the uh, 55 to 65 implicit on a scepter is enormous. Remember, the ability to stun an enemy is a function of your stun chance, which is more like a stun rate multiplier, but ask me elsewhere, or ask me somewhere else about that. It's a function of stun chance, shock, which increased the enemy's uh, chance to receive a stun, and also how big your single hit damage is. So having a ton of flat damage is going to make it so you stun enemies really consistently. This is another one of those builds that, it's one of those things I really like about characters, when you can just like walk up to a diamond matron, stun it, kill it, one-shot it, not deal with, the, with its mechanics, it feels very, very good. You can even stun some bosses when you're using a build like this as well, because your single hit, single, you know... Lightning zap damage is so, so high. Uh, of note, I think this spell lightning damage is inoptimal. I think I'd rather have crit multi there, but I never found an upgrade. So melee, melee attack speed, I think crit multi is what you're looking for in the affixes on this. Cool. Um, so we talked about this difference here. We talked about the difference of not using the rune dagger. I, I prefer the scepter. And then remember for single target, we're going to swap into this in our offhand. The third difference is what we're doing for uh, our helmet and our body armor because these are new base types that have been added to the game. We have base types that give percent health. There's a body armor that gives percent health as well. And then there's also this body armor which has flat spell damage on it. So without the percent health, I think like we're already over 3,500 life. We're already giga tanky. We're already face tanking some of the hardest bosses in the game like tier 4 Kremeris, for example in the Soulfire Bastion. We don't need 4,000 life. It's fine. Like 3,500 life, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. So suffice it to say, we have our body armor giving us flat spell damage. And then for our helmet, I think you do want this one. It has a percent health and also leech on it. We have damage leeched as health in our mastery on crit. That is this node right here. So 4%. And then along with this, puts us at 6.7% damage leeched as health on hit and on crit. And then we're capped crit. So that feels very good. As for the affixes, uh, ideally what I settled on is uh, Vitality on the helmet. I do want Crit Multi while transformed, it's excellent. And then for the prefixes on the body armor, I don't want Vitality here. I want Crit Multi while transformed and plus levels to Tornado. If I could seal a tier 1 modifier, I would seal Swarm Blade form on my body armor. But Tornado is giving me 
Uh, this node here, which is 7% attack speed per point. And if I had Swarmblade form, I'd be getting 5% attack speed per point. So I think ideal affixes for me would be crit multi while transformed and plus level two tornado with maybe a sealed tier one affix for Swarmblade form. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. And then uh, I think that about does it for the differences of gear there. So we have one difference here, two difference to the rune dagger, three difference is this, four difference is the rings. This is a new ring base type that's been added to the game in 0 0.9. This has two all attributes and we actually use all of our attributes even dexterity pretty well. So having uh having the one to two all attributes, it's like this is really, really good. I'm gonna use this on like most of my builds, if I'm honest with you. It also gives us dive cooldown recovery speed, which does a number of things for us, and it also just makes us more mobile. So these rings are S tier. I love them. Um, and then I guess the last important thing here for the relic, and let's segue into um another topic of conversation, which is instead of the main differences between this build and old build, we'll talk about the reliability of a Spriggan pet. I've heard a complaint often, and I used to complain about this, how often does my Spriggan pet die while I'm doing monoliths? If you invest not at all into defenses, if the only defenses you have for summon Spriggan pet are these nodes right here, and maybe a little bit of extra attunement, which gives us flat health. How much attunement do we have? 32, not much at all. You're gonna feel like it dies. So what I do, I would recommend having one good minion health affix somewhere on your gear. When I say good, I mean like a tier six or tier seven somewhere. You don't need two. I've got two of them. It's by accident. I didn't mean to, but I recommend having at least one minion health affix. If you do that, you'll be good to go. At low levels, you can use something like this. This Hunter's Emanation in order to get like a tiny bit of health for your minion. It doesn't scale particularly well, but it is fine. Uh, at like medium levels, you can use this. This gives like a little bit of potion health to your minions, which is fine, not great. But really what you need is just like enough minion health so that your minion can survive um, whatever big pack of enemies you're about to dive into. So just like just a little bit of this. I don't think you need to go overboard with minion health regen as well. But just one FX here should be great for you. So we talked about the main differences main differences between this build and the old build. Talked about the reliability of the Spring and Companion. And I want to give a shout out to other versions of this build as well. Because not only have tons of gamers been playing with this, but lots of content creators have been playing with the Lightning Bug as well. Notably, Bina. So Bina is one of the two people who helped me explore this build. Uh, got me to try out this build when we were still in the early access 0 0.9 a couple weeks ago. And the build's only gotten better since then because more people are playing it and more people experiment with it. So I will leave a link in the description of this video linking over to Bina's YouTube channel and the video he put up recently talking about sacrificing, you know, damage and health and defense and just going for as much movement speed as you possibly can get. And it's kind of a different play style because you're not stunning stuff. You don't have this absurd flat damage from the scepter here. But uh, if you just want to go fast and that's what you care about, he's got a lot of options for itemization about how to go as fast as possible. So I like this version of the build. I love what we're doing with the Enigma, but I'm also happy that other versions of this build exist. That makes me very happy. The last thing that I want to talk about before we just go over the gear is uh, this Call Navars. You'll see the two of these are sitting in my inventory. Yes, I wanted to use a Call Navars. If I had a Call Navars with exalted melee attack speed on it, LP'd onto it, um, I, I'm pretty sure it'd be absurd. I think it'd be very, very strong. With no attack speed, I don't even want to try it because I think the attack speed is really important. Um, but yeah, that's that's why these are sitting here. Before we go over the rest of the build, I, I do want to mention something else. I mentioned this earlier. I talked about mechanics of the build. There is another question that comes up with some frequency, and let's address that right now. That is this node right here, Eye of the Storm. So Tornado deals significantly more damage, uh, but you only... You can no longer cast additional tornadoes at once. This question comes up a lot. You can have multiple tornadoes on your head at a time. If you have a bunch of attack speed, you can have two or maybe even three tornadoes on top of your head. For single target, my build has two tornadoes on top of its head. Uh, I, I know it, it says like you can only you can no longer cast additional tornadoes. That's casting additional tornadoes at one time. Because remember, as like the base skill, you have all this like double cast chance where you might cast two tornadoes at the same time. So yes, attack speed is important for this build. It does all sorts of things. It gives you dodge. It applies ailments. It's, uh, it gives you more, da more dodge and flat, flat dodge and ailments. Uh, but it's also casting tornadoes, and it's casting tornadoes 
twice or maybe even three times on top of your head. So make sure that you uh, you know about that mechanic there. All right, so those are the, the, the primary things about this video. Uh, if you've already watched the other video or if you already know about the mastery, the skills, the gear, then you don't need to watch this next part. But listen, we're going to talk about it because this is YouTube. Going over the skills, uh, if you want to start playing this build at level 50, level 50 is when you unlock all five skills. I think that's the best point to start transitioning into it. Maelstrom, this is pretty much the only way that I ever proc it or that I ever spec it. We have our permanent haze, permanent frenzy on the top left here. Bunch of duration and some flat dodge, which we do get to scale with our more dodge from the other parts of the build. And then I think it's important to call out these. This is, um, well, let's see, 12. Oh, don't make me do math. I hate doing math. It's like 700-ish flat stun chance. I guess there's no such thing as flat stun chance. It's like 700-ish stun chance uh, from having your maelstroms up. And it's one of the reasons that this build gets to stun monsters and even stun bosses so consistently. These nodes are excellent. I think they are important for this build to make it feel anything similar to how I'm playing it here. Tornado, here's what the skill tree looks like. The extra skill points, if you're like level 21, 22, 23, I would put them into uh, the attack speed over here. 7% attack speed per point is no joke. Getting the extra uh, four out of four for duration so that you can possibly have two or maybe even three tornadoes on top of your head is great as well. I recommend that. Uh, having a tiny 5% more damage multiplier is fine, but I mean, 5% more damage, it's, it's it doesn't mechanically change the skill, whereas like duration and attack speed give you other quality of life as well. For Summon Spriggan, we have the most important nodes in the tree, the bottom middle here. We get 15 flat spell damage, and we also have the base crit and crit avoidance. Remember, this the Summon Spriggan does not need to actively use its healing wind thing. Just having her standing next to you gives you those buffs. You don't need to also activate something on top of that. We have two points over here for a little bit of extra dodge rating, and then all of these points here for as much tankiness as possible. In Swarm Blade form, the first things that I would pick up would be the top right and the top right. So actually procking the tornadoes and then having all the rage gain on crit with all five points in a base critical strike chance. Um, down here, you don't need to have all four Maelstrom stacks on dive. You need to have like three because like three times two is six and then six procs your haste and frenzy over here. But if you like to do like more flat dodge or additional stun chance that we were just talking about, having the extra point here works. If you have extra points, you could put them into defenses, but more realistically, go for attack speed. The least important skill, but the skill that we're still specking into is Serpent Strike. Serpent Strike's changed a lot, but it still has some core components that we like. We have 18% kill threshold, which is great to have included in any build. We have all the attack speed here and the more dodge here. So these three nodes are really standing out as excellent for us. The rest of this is kind of fluff. If the lunge felt more consistent, I would spec into it, but it doesn't feel consistent. So instead, I spec into flat dodge on the far left of the skill tree and some extra armor shred and some technically useful armor shred effect from Serpent Strike. Of note, armor shred from this is insufficient for your entire build. You do need to have some other source of armor shred because other source of armor shred is generic armor shred. And generic armor shred also happens to apply to your tornado storm orbs, your tornado lightning, your lightning, uh, from Maelstrom and your Spark Charges themselves. So if you only have Armor Shred on Serpent Strike, you're missing out because you could have way more Armor Shred. On Single Target, if I'm only using this, I've got like 10 or 15 stacks of Armor Shred. If I have generic chance to apply Armor Shred with this thing, my Armor Shred goes up to like 170 stacks. So for example, it's very good. Let's go to the Mastery real quick and we'll talk about why this build is so flipping tanky. We have some pretty boring looking nodes here. Um, I recommend taking this dual wield node because it allows me to go like this for my single target damage when I need to and just like respec one point because the game turns it off. We have 22 points in Beastmaster. This is our tax for being as tanky as possible. Actually, for being any primalist, <laughs> we're taking these nodes. So we have damage reduction. We have damage reduction here. We have some additional damage reduction here. And then because we're a melee build, we get to proc our damage reduction on hit. If you want to go overboard on damage reduction, you could also get aspect or increased effect of aspect of the boar on your idol, but I found that not necessary. You're almost too tanky already. We have five points in shaman just to get our tornado stuff. That's great. And then for our druid mastery, uh, I'm actually going to skip over most of the stuff on the bottom because it's not particularly interesting. We've got a couple points for like attributes, health, you know, damage while transformed. 
These nodes are important, having the health leeched on crit and as much attack speed as possible. But realistically, I think these three nodes at the top are the most important. So let's talk about these. The rage gain on crit, once you have this threshold with 8 out of 10, that's when your build's going to start feeling like you permanently be a swarm blade. And that's when the fun begins because you don't need to be human anymore. So I like that. These last two nodes are where even more of your tankiness comes from. We have uh, health, maximum health gained as endurance threshold. Normally, in last epoch, you have 20% health gained as endurance threshold. When you're playing a druid with 10 points here, instead of having 20, you have 30% maximum health gained as endurance threshold. So we want to build a bunch of life. We have a 3,800 life. And then 30% of that is endurance threshold, which is 60% damage reduction. Our last point here is an excellent piece of synergy. It's why our flat dodge and our more dodge and our percent increase dodge feels so good. Because when we're dodging so often, we get to keep our stacks of impervious very often. We're also building the melee attack speed. So if we do lose them, we can build them up very quickly. So this impervious is how much damage reduction? Four times five stacks, 20% extra damage reduction. Yeah, super, super strong. Love this node. That about does it there. We talked a lot about the gear already. We don't need to say too many things. What I will say is that for my gear here, I have critical strike chance instead of spell crit. You would like to have spell critical strike chance instead. Scaling the melee damage of this build, I think is just a waste of time. So just go spell crit and uh, consolidate your crit chance, crit chance, crit chance into probably just one thing that looks like this where it's exalted spell critical strike chance. Remember spell crit rolls higher than normal crit does. Rest of this, we have percent health where it's available, hybrid health where it's available, hybrid health where it's available, hybrid health where it's available. That's pretty normal looking stuff. For idols, you can basically do whatever you want. We talked about increased effective acid with the boar. If you want to go overkill and be as tanky as possible, you could spell damage while transformed. You could um, cold damage, lightning damage is a suffix. If you get both of those, it's like having double, double damage idol. Um, but I think at that point, you're probably just more interested in getting some uh, extra utility. Uh, if you wanted to cap your resistances in your idols, you can have elemental resistance while transformed. That's another option. Or you could just go ham and have seven or eight of these, with it, which is just like percent health, flat health, to get, you know, 4,000 life in your build. Your idols are very, very flexible. Your damage is not going to fluctuate too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> really, whatever you have. If you want to use all your idols for resistances, I think you're still going to feel very good about that. Let's talk about the blessings for just a moment. When I talk about blessings, I like to swap over to this view because I find it more helpful. We already have 6.5% spell damage leech's health. So I think just going for crit multi here instead of more leech. Listen, if you have leech as well, that's fine. But one of those two things in the Black Sun. We're a lightning build, so lightning shred is mandatory. It's going to feel excellent. We already have tons of crit avoid from our Spriggan pet and from our attunement stacking. So having the plus to all resistances here is great. And then, as I like to say, the more that I play Last Epoch, the more that I want just as much armor as I can get, because armor feels great. Remember, armor does mitigate non-physical hits at a 70% effectiveness. So we have flat armor here, percent armor here, and that about does it for our blessings. Remember, everything over here is just drop rate blessings. You can deal with those however you want for whatever it is you're trying to farm. So this build has been just like excellent. I'm so happy that we got to play this build a second time and even like iterate on it, make a new version of it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it for the build. If you have any questions about this, you can always ask on Discord in the comment section of this video here, or you can drop a Twitch at twitch.tv slash the pig where I'm streaming Last Epoch almost every single day. So if you like this build, tell me what your version of it looks like. Remember to check out Bina's version, which I'll be linking in the description of this video, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.